Okay, welcome to the last session and session four of the basics of econometrics. In this session, we are going to focus on the most important technique which is used in econometrics, not just at the primary stage, but also at different levels as per modifications required. Most of the people who are aware about statistics, they are also aware about regression. They have some kind of understanding of regression. And with the introduction of uh, softwares, it has become quite common to apply regression in different data sets. However, what is missed is the conceptual understanding of regression. And that conceptual understanding of regression also differs from statistics in comparison to the, the econometrics. So there is some differences that we are going to discuss those differences and then we are going to understand what is regression and what conceptual understanding is required uh, before applying regression. So the first thing is that regression in a statistics is considered to be a deterministic model which means if we have two independent variables and one dependent variables, it is believed that there is a relationship between independent variables and dependent variables, meaning thereby that the independent variables are impacting the dependent variable. However, the variables that are left behind are not considered. So the coefficients, the multiplier, the intensities that are identified in a particular business statistics model or simple statistics model of regression, they are absolute. However, they because they have ignored the other variables, that's why in econometrics, we approach uh, towards an indeterministic model. So in econometrics, we are focusing on regression, but with indeterministic modeling, wherein we have role of those variables also that we have not taken into consideration. So we try to develop and understand the, the randomness effect as well. So the ordinary least square, that is the regression analysis, uh, is the most widely used tool in, in econometric analysis. And there are some prerequisites, we call them assumptions and technical word is the finite simple properties of ordinary least square. So uh, in journal parlance, it is assumptions of regression, but in econometrics, the technical term is finite sample properties, FSPs of the ordinary least square, that is OLS. Now, why these finite sample properties are important for regression analysis in econometrics and what is their conceptual understanding? For that, uh, we need to see how people are applying regression. And several of the published research suggests that uh, researchers have applied regression, but they have ignored several of the finite sample properties. And if finite sample properties are not followed, then the inferences drawn from the outcome of the regressions are maybe questionable. So therefore, we need to remember that uh, linear regression, uh, people who are applying linear regression, they generally do not use or justify the use of finite sample properties. However, in econometrics, this is the starting point that there should always be explanation and justification of the finite sample properties. One of the studies which was conducted and published uh, has discussed how finite sample properties have been used or has been not used. And the study identified that out of the 99 studies selected, only 17% of the studies, so 16 point something, uh, so 16 studies around, uh, discussed FSP2 multicollinearity and they ignored the other finite sample property. Most of the studies consider only linearity and normality, and then they apply the regression analysis. However, this is not the acceptable approach in econometrics. 
In econometrics, we have to check and justify for all the finite sample properties. So we have to discuss all the finite sample properties, uh, starting from first and second finite sample properties. The first finite sample property is that linearity in parameter. When we say linear regression, what does it mean? Linearity of what? Linearity of parameters or linearity of the variables? This is a question. So in econometrics, linearity or linear regression means linearity of the parameter that is coefficients are linear. Variables may or may not be linear. So if the parameters are li linear, then it is important to understand that the variables may or may not be linear. And that justifies the thing that real uh, relationship may not be linear in nature. They may be exponential, they may be arithmetic, etc. So the, this leads us to the random process. The linearity in parameters when it is expounded means that the random process follows the linear model where if we see the sequence of errors of distribution, n is the number of observations. So this is the technical approach, but simply it means that the coefficient should be linear in nature. The second FSP that is finite sample property is no perfect collinearity, which means that the correlation between different independent variables, it should not be 100%, it should not be equal to 1 which means that if suppose we have four independent variables, A, B, C, D, C and D should not have 100% or correlation equal to one. If that is the case, it means that they both are correlated and that is going to affect the impact on the dependent variable. The model is then called a misspecified model. So in the time series, no independent variable is constant nor a perfect linear combination of the other. Because if explanatory variables are correlated, then there is a problem associated with finding out the impact on the dependent variable. The next is the FSP3, which, mean, which says that there should be zero conditional mean in the data which we are using. For each T, for each time span, the expected value of the error term should be conditional to zero. Symbolically, EUT slash theta is equal to zero. Not going into the technical thing, the conceptual understanding means that the mean condition to the sample should be equivalent to zero. It means there should be stability. The next if we want to explain it further, it means that the random variable for consecutive time periods as we go on into the time periods must not be correlated. It means time invariant relationship should be there. So more clearly, it means that if we are in a deterministic regression model, which is in case of uh, statistics, uh, in that particular model, the ut which is which we have not considered because it is a deterministic model the ut and the theta are uncorrelated okay this is the finite sample property three the next is the finite sample property four and five four is the homocedasticity it means that the uh, the different types of data which we have the sample different sample it is spread over different sample there is uh, the representation of the same type of sample. So uh, homogeneity is there in the observation in the sample which we are using in our data set. Technically, it means that conditional to the theta, the variance of the array term is same for all t. So there is stability in the variance. This is the technical specification of it. And then we have the finite sample property five that there is no serial correlation or autocorrelation. This particular problem is generally found in the time series data. Why the FSP4 is a significant problem uh, related to the panel data. So there is no autocorrelation, which means the past and the present value are not impacted, which means that suppose we have 2010 GDP and 2009 GDP. So 2009 GDP is not affecting the 2010 GDP. 
or if it is affected, then we try to nullify the effect so as to find out the impact of the current sample size. Then we have the FSP uh, 6, which is normality. Now, this is the finite sample property, which is most widely used before applying regression. And this is because of the fact that this normality is actually the normal distribution. And few people get confused with normal distribution and normality as an assumption of regression. These two are different things. Normal distribution is the distribution of the data. But normality here is the norma normal distribution of the error term in econometrics. So these two are separate things. These two are not the same thing. So the key takeaway is that we have five, six FSPs, finite sample property, also known as assumptions. Technically, they are FSPs. And before applying regression in econometrics, because we are using indeterministic modeling, all the FSP6 should be used and should be checked upon. Only after the justification of the finite sample properties, all the finite sample properties, a regression outcome can be used for drawing inferences. For all those who are beginners in econometrics or even people who want to revise econometrics or to climb the ladder in the economics, econometrics, I think that this particular four module discussion can motivate you and can provide you the fundamental conceptual understanding of econometrics and further in the future modules, you can select the modules on your own online or you can read the books. The reading materials I have also submitted. You can see the reading material list. And with the help of that, uh, you can gain gradually an expertise in applying uh, econometrics, methods, modeling and techniques in your data set. Thank you, everybody. Hope that the concepts uh, provided here will go a long way in uh, in contributing towards your research. Thank you, everybody.